Major funding for this Re 180 workshop is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. At Chiff Peanut Butter, we know just how choosy you are when it comes to your family, including the shows you value most. Public television encourages kids' curiosity and love of learning, and Jif is proud to support CyberChase on behalf of all choosy moms and dads. Intel Corporation is a proud supporter of PBS. The Intel Innovation in Education Initiative provides teachers with the resources to inspire their students and encourage them to unlock their potential. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This program was also made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Workshop 7, Creatures of the Deep. Have you ever wondered what's lurking at the bottom of the sea? Believe it or not, we probably know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the floor of the ocean. The sea covers more than 70% of the Earth, but the deepest parts of it have always been hidden from view. Today, new technologies are allowing us to finally explore the world beneath the waves. And for the very first time in history, we're coming face to face with the alien environment that begins just off the coast. In this workshop, you'll find out about a group of scientists who are setting out to count every single species of ocean plant and animal in what they call the census of marine life. You'll meet a woman who gets to explore the mysteries of the ocean's floor as a deep sea scientist and also got to play one in a film. Cool, right? Scientists think about the ocean as separate layers of depth. In your third reading, you'll discover just what it takes to adapt and survive in all three of them. Our video story profiles Fabian Cousteau and follows his breathtaking adventure in the shark sub he created so he could get up close and personal with a hungry group of great whites. Reading 1. Sea Census Underway. It's like exploring an entirely new planet in a spaceship of the deep. Researchers are currently launching a team of deep sea rovers, remote controlled submarines equipped with cameras and sensors to boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. It's all part of a worldwide ocean census. Over a thousand scientists across the globe are participating in this unprecedented count of all the species of plants and animals in the oceans. And what they're finding down there couldn't be more astonishing. Check out this guy. In this news story, you'll discover the what, the how, and the how many of one of the greatest explorations of our time. Reading 2, Diana Figueroa, Sea Scientist. Diana Figueroa has one of the world's coolest jobs. She gets to go to the very bottom of the ocean and explore a mysterious world that most of us will never see. Diana travels in a mini submarine called a submersible, and this modern marvel transports her and a team of scientists miles below the ocean's surface. It's darker down there than almost anywhere on Earth. In order to survive, animals must adapt to a life without sunlight. So where do they get their energy in this cold, dark place? Hydrothermal vents. These are like underwater geysers spewing super hot, mineral-rich water that some creatures thrive on, like white crabs and tube worms. In this profile, you'll learn more about the secret life of the ocean floor and the scientist who dares to bring some of it back. Reading three, life in the ocean zones. In some places, the ocean is over six miles deep. Plants and animals that live in those murky depths must adapt 
or die. Most sea plants and animals live close to the top because that's where the sun is. But the same light that provides photosynthesis and warmth also makes it harder to hide from predators looking for lunch. Deeper below, where it's much darker, creatures like the hatchetfish use an adaptation called bioluminescence to make their own light and camouflage themselves from predators below. Further down is a place where the sun never shines and few creatures can thrive. It's too dark, too cold, and there's not a lot to eat. It's a mysterious realm where animals must adapt to nutrition delivered from underwater geysers that feed hot hydrothermal vents. In this article, you'll find out just what it takes to survive and even thrive in all the depths of the vast open sea. More than 20 feet long and weighing over 5,000 pounds, the great white shark is the top predator of the sea, calmly ripping off chunks of its prey and swallowing them whole. No wonder the simple sight of one of these creatures is enough to strike fear in our hearts. But Fabian Cousteau thinks this demon of the deep is deeply misunderstood. So he set out to learn more about great whites by becoming one. Inside the shark cell. Ocean research in manned submersibles has come a long way. From this, to this, to this? No, that's not a man-eating shark. It's a man in a shark. The man is Fabian Cousteau, and his obsession with great white sharks led him to build the submarine that looks, moves, and behaves like a great white shark. Fabian thinks the great white gets a bad rap as a man-eating villain, a monster to be hunted and exterminated. He wanted to dispel some of those myths by learning more about these creatures. What better way to do it than to swim among them, pretending to be another shark? Some people thought Fabian was crazy, but he persevered, putting together an unusual team of scientists, sailors, and a Hollywood design engineer to build the thing. Not only did it have to look like a shark, it had to withstand a shark attack, so two-inch ribs were carefully fashioned out of stainless steel. This is getting exciting. I mean, there's, there's form now, there's shape. But the toughest technical hurdle was to get it to move like a great white shark with no engine noise or bubbles. The team devised a system that powered the shark sub with highly compressed air. Finally, this mechanical marvel was covered by skin flex, an elastic material that looks almost like the real thing, with cameras cleverly hidden in the head, inside the sub, and below the fence. The shark sub looked great and failed miserably in a test swim going round and round in circles. But after a few visits back to the drawing board, it was ready. The crew set sail for Isla Guadalupe, a desolate volcanic island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and favorite feeding ground of the great white shark. Would the shark sub survive in the open sea? And how would the real sharks react to the pretender? Outside the sub, the sharks were curious, but didn't know what to make of this odd intruder. Inside the sub, communication was breaking down and the crew lost radio contact with Fabian. I can barely hear you. Then a terrifying thing happened. The shark sub sank like a stone, crashing to the bottom of the sea. Fabian was in big trouble. A panic member of the crew dove into the shark-infested waters to rescue the sub. <laughs> Unfazed, Fabian jumped right back in, week after week. He saw firsthand that sharks are sharp-sighted, intelligent, and extremely curious. They use their teeth like hands to feel out unfamiliar objects, kind of like a taste test. They never tried to attack the sub or Fabian. People are not the shark's preferred food. We're way too bony. In the end, Fabian knew he wasn't crazy, merely curious, like a gray white. 
Besides, the chance to hang out with these guys and these guys was well worth the risk. Whoa.